God doesn't call us to understand. He calls us to obey. Hey guys, it's Pastor Deustin. Thank you so much for checking out today's devotional. I hope and pray that it blesses you. I stream these devotionals live on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and then I upload them to YouTube the next day. If you'd ever like to join me live to be a part of the Devo, you can find more information about my stream in the description down below. Let's get into today's Devo. I hope it blesses you. For today's Devo time, I um, wanted to share a story that's found kind of buried in the Old Testament, but it's actually a really cool story out of 2 Kings. Um, 2 Kings, we've I believe we've already read through this one live on stream, uh, but yeah, no, we have. Um, but it's uh, regarding the prophet Elisha. So we know about Elijah, the things he did, and then Elisha, who came after him. And in chapter 3, there's a really interesting story where these three kings, the king of Israel, Judah, and Edom, are all going to battle the king of Moab. And while they're on their way, they're, they're getting real close to Moab, and they end up in a valley, and they run out of water. So while they're in the valley, they can like see their opponents. They can see where they're going to battle and they run out of water, and they are at the point that they are going to die if they don't get some water. So they say, isn't there a prophet of the Lord around who we can ask uh, him to talk to God to send rain so we don't die? And they find the prophet Elisha and say, um, please call on God, ask him to send rain, we need water or we're going to die. Elisha doesn't want to do it, but he eventually agrees, and he prays, and he tells them something really strange. He says, go into the valley and dig ditches. And whenever you dig ditches, God is going to fill those ditches with water. And he said, it's going to be an easy thing for God to do. And then he's going to give you the victory over the Moabites. And so they do. They go and dig a bunch of ditches. And the next morning, uh, it says that water came flowing down through the valley and filled all the ditches. And so they got the water that they needed. And then something crazy that happened is in the morning, the Moabites looked over the valley and they saw the reflection of the sun on the water and they, they thought it was blood. It looked red to them. And they thought that those three kings and their armies had turned on each other and killed each other. And so they thought the valley was full of blood. So they went down to go just, you know, kill anyone who was left and plunder, you know. And um, But whenever they start going down to just plunder, the armies rise up, they wake up, and they kill, they kill all the Moabites. They go in, they, they have complete victory. So kind of a, a unique and interesting story, but there's some really cool things that we can learn from that story. Um, the first thing I want to point out is why... Did they get to the point where they ran out of water in the first place? Like, uh, a human can only go for a couple of days without water, so why didn't they prepare? And whenever they did get to that point, they, they realize they're going to die if they don't get some water, and then they call on God. Why is it that God is always our last resort instead of our first option? We should go to God first, always, in everything. We should be seeking the Lord on everything that we do in life. We should go to him first instead of try our own thing, and then whenever we realize it's not going to work, then go to God and say, God, please bail me out of this situation I've gotten myself in. No, go to God first. Make God your first option, not your last resort. Um, another thing is that God had this plan, had this purpose. He was working through all things as he does. He's in control. But um, we see that the people still had a responsibility in this story. So God was going to send the water. But he told the people to dig the ditches. So the people still had a, a role. They still had to walk in obedience to what the prophet had told them. Because if they didn't go and dig those ditches, they wouldn't have caught any of the water. Because that's obviously what caught the water. It just would have flown right by. The water was the blessing. It was the answer. It was what they needed. 
It was not only what they needed to sustain life because they needed water to drink, it was also the very key that gave them the victory because the Moabites saw the, the water and it looked like blood. Um, if they had not dug all those ditches, neither one of those things would have happened. But they did. They walked in obedience. So we have a part in these things. Like a lot of times we get so lost in the weeds of God's sovereignty versus man's responsibility and the truth is, they're both true. <laughs> God is completely sovereign. He's in complete control. He has a plan and a purpose in all things. He's working through all things for his plan, according to his decree, for his glory, for our good. All that's true. But we don't see the big picture. We don't see all the details of how everything's going to work out. We simply need to trust and obey. That's our responsibility. Trust and and obey. God's going to do what God's going to do. But we don't get to see all the behind the scenes. We'll figure that out on the other side of eternity. Don't get all caught up arguing about that. It's not going to do us any good if we figure it all out. The point is, trust that God is in control, that he is going to accomplish his plans and purposes as he is as he has always planned. Nothing's going to take him by surprise. He doesn't have a plan B. It's going to happen the way God says it's going to happen. But you, in the moment, still need to obey. You need to do what God has called you to do. So God's sovereignty does not negate man's responsibility. We still have a part to play, and we need to obey. Another thing is what a bizarre thing to be told to dig ditches. Like, okay, we need water or we're going to die because we have this big battle tomorrow. Okay, go get your shovels and start digging holes in the ground. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Elisha, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted rain to happen. I wanted this bucket to magically refill. Come on, give me water. I want Ozarka in my hand right now. And that's not what Elisha said. He said, God says go dig holes. God doesn't call us to understand. He calls us to obey. There's a lot of times in life whenever God calls us to do things that don't make sense to us. We could all probably tell stories about times whenever we've heard something strange, we've walked in obedience, and then whenever we look back, we see the way that God worked. We see what he did and how it all made sense in hindsight. Hindsight's 2020. But whenever we're looking forward and we hear something that doesn't make sense, we're just like, what in the world? What are you talking about? We're not called to understand. We're called to obey. So even whenever God is calling us to do things that might not make sense to us logically, because um, to be honest, a lot of the things that Jesus taught didn't make sense to the disciples who were hearing it in that moment logically. They were always like, he was always flipping their logical brain upside down to be first you must be last. To be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. You should love your neighbor. You should forgive someone who's wronged you. How many times? Seven? No, 70 times seven. Like every time they would say something, he flipped it on its head. We're just called to obey. And then the last thing that I would point out is that the amount of the blessing and answer that they received was directly proportional to the level of their obedience. If they had only dug five holes, they would have got five holes worth of water. But they went out and they dug the valley full of ditches, which made it not only provide all the water that they needed, but also look like the valley was full of blood. See, God had a plan. God worked through it all. It made sense afterwards. In the moment, it didn't. But what if they had only dug those five holes? They would have got a little bit of water. The Moabites wouldn't have seen it and it wouldn't have looked like blood. And the whole story might have turned out differently. But like I said, don't get caught up on the what ifs. I'm just saying, <laughs> whenever God calls you to do something, go all out. Completely obey. Walk in full obedience. It's so easy for us to question things, to hesitate, but step out in faith and see what God will do. And that's our Devo for today. I hope that blesses and encourages you. Um, it's a really cool story. It's kind of a random one. Um, 
it seems random because it just seems like such a bizarre story. Um, but it's there in Second Kings 3 if you want to read through it for yourself. A very, very cool time whenever God worked through extraordinary means uh, to accomplish his purposes.